Well, rather than good morning, good evening to you. This, this evening, I'm going to just share a, a brief meditation with you uh, on the scripture we're going to read tonight. The book of John, John did not include the, uh, the Lord's Supper. It's amazing to believe that, but in the book of John, it is not in the book of John. It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but John did not have it there. But what we're going to be reading tonight is about the, the uh, washing of the disciples' feet. And I just want to share a little meditation from that before we, and it, so it would be prior. You'll read it afterwards. <laughs> we'll read it after that. So, and, I, and also I brought with me uh, the great Thanksgiving, which is uh, for our communion time. <clears throat> Let's begin with the call to worship. Welcome to you who call upon the name of Christ. We gather tonight to recall the night that Jesus was betrayed. Are you prepared to come to the feast of Jesus, the Christ, whose life was poured out for you? Are you able to watch with Jesus at prayer in the garden? Indeed, to struggle yourselves to be in unity with God, God's will for you. Then let us praise God, even in this hour of darkness. God of all grace and steadfast love, greatly is your name to be praised in all the earth. Bring us to this feast of remembrance with open hearts. Please pray with me. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, Mercifully grant that we may receive it truthfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just wanted to share briefly with you... Um, when I looked up the reading for this Holy Thursday evening, it was, take, it was this reading from John, and it does not include the Last Supper, but, so we'll read that in the, our great Thanksgiving. But as I read through it, uh, it, it really struck me. This is, uh, you know, foot washing at that time. If you lived in Israel at that time, they didn't have paved roads. They were all dirt and nobody had uh, sneakers. Everybody wore sandals. And as a result, everybody's feet was always dirty. Your feet were always dirty. And so if you were invited someplace to someone's house to share in a meal, when you came to, their, to the house, they would wash your feet. Now, the, the host never washed, washed anyone's feet. He had a servant or a slave wash the feet of the guests who came in, which was an indication of, uh, of welcomeness. You know, you're welcomed here, um, you know, and an indication of friendship and, uh, and uh, fellowship with one another. And the interesting thing is, if you remember, when Jesus went to Simon, Simon's house, Simon the Pharisee, he went in and, uh, and we, we realize when the woman comes in who is said to have been a prostitute and she weeps over his feet. She's weeping as she kneels at his feet and then she dries his feet with her hair. And Jesus says to Simon, Simon, when I came, you didn't wash my feet, but she's washed my feet with her tears and you didn't dry my feet, but she dried my feet with her hair. 
So it's an indication that Simon, really, it's a, in that time, to not wash someone's feet was a snub. It was kind of to say, well, you're here, but I'm not recognizing you as a valued guest in my home. And so Jesus clearly let him know that he was welcomed, not by Simon, but by this woman who was rejected by everyone else. She knew who he was. And so um, the host never did that, never washed anyone's feet. And Simon, you know, obviously would, didn't even bother to tell his servants to do that. So, you know, it reminded me as I, as I read this of a time I was on a retreat weekend and, um, and we were doing, um, celebrating the sacraments and everyone was acting out one of the sacraments. Washing feet is not one of the sacraments of the church. It was never added to the sacraments because it's only mentioned here in John. There's no, any other, no, no other place where there's support for it. The other gospels do not mention it and it, it never is mentioned as, uh, as something that would be held as a sacrament. It's a tradition. Many churches, uh, this evening, many churches are, are foot washed. They do the foot washing as a symbol of what Jesus, his humility in what he did. But <clears throat> um, I remember this time on a retreat, and you know, I, I was trying to escape the, the part that would make me uncomfortable. So I immediately said, I'll read. I'll read the scripture, and, and someone else, you know, volunteered to do the part of Jesus, and, and then four people sat down to have their feet washed. And, um, and so I, be, I thought, well, phew, this won't be hard at all. And so I, I, I picked up my, uh, the, my, my Bible, and I, um, this is what I read. I said, when the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So he was, so, he was eager to be there with them. And so in, in a symbol, as a as an expression of his love and why he was so glad to be there with him. He read that he washed their feet. Now, as I thought about this, you know, if the Queen of England had ever called me to come for tea, whoa, wow, would that be something, huh? How about if, uh, Oh, let me see. If the president called you up and wanted you to give your opinion on something, he probably knows better than to call me. But <laughs> if someone like, uh, what's the young lady now who is so, Taylor Swift, if you were at one of her concerts and she came out and called you out of the crowd to come up and be recognized and stand with her, whoa. So as I thought about this, Jesus washing their feet. You know, I think sometimes we get too familiar, don't we? We get familiar and comfortable, and we forget. And as I thought about, you know, it really, being stuck in my recliner for a few days has been a good thing for me. I was sitting there and I was thinking, wash my feet, Jesus? You know, Peter said, no, you can't wash my feet. Never, Lord. And Jesus said, if I don't, you won't be part of me. And, and then Peter says, oh, wait a minute. If that's the case, give me a bath. <laughs> but the thing is, as I thought about it, this is Jesus, God incarnate, the one who was there when all of creation was spoken into being, the one who sustains 
all of creation. The one who knows the number of hairs on our head. The one who walked on water. The one who healed people of demon possession and of all kinds of illnesses. The one who stood up and spoke truth. You know, the only truth that's truth, that's absolute truth always is Jesus. Any truth that comes from any place else can have a slant to it and not be complete truth. So here he is, God incarnate, the creator of all things, washing their feet. Wow. The more I thought about it, I thought, you know, I probably would have responded by, like Peter. We all know our station in life. And he knew this was the master. He was not the master. He was the disciple. He was the follower. Why would the master wash his feet? And yet our God determined to do that. To humble himself. You know, it says in, in Philippians, Philippians, he humbled himself even to death upon a cross for us. I don't want to take that casually. I think that it's very easy for us. We take all of our seasons very casually. You know, we can get caught up with Hallmark. But this is an amazing, incredible thing that happened for all of us, for all of them. You know, serving others is not about, uh, you know, the thing is, think about this. Judas was there. The very one who would betray him to the Romans, who would kiss by a kiss indicate this is the one you want. He was there. And Jesus washed his feet. As I thought about it, I thought, you know, there are some people that I know, I might have a little struggle kneeling down in front of them and washing their feet. Anybody in your life you might struggle with washing their feet. He washed his feet, knowing what Judas was going to do. The God of all creation washed Judas' feet. It was, there was a chance still for Judas, but he passed it up. But the, I guess the thing that I want most of all is that we remember that when, you know, and I watch you in this church, you are servants. You know, that in, in our reading tonight it will say, uh, the new command, I, the new, a new commandment to love one another. My word, you love one another well. I sense that love. I feel that love. I sense the presence of Jesus in this place because of your love. And the thing is, we have to remember that just as Jesus did, there are people that I would really struggle if they came and sat in front of me and I was asked to wash their feet. But I, as I remembered back to that night when we did that uh, re reenactment, I started to read. And I thought, hey, this, I got the easy job. And then I started to cry. And I couldn't stop. The tears just kept pouring. And then I looked, and the, and the person kneeling, washing the feet, she was crying. And then the four people sitting there, were crying. And then I turned around and I looked at a room of about 60 people and they were all crying. It should be enough to bring us to that place. Not tears of sadness, tears of incredible joy and deep belief that this God of ours did what he did for the joy set before him, us. The joy set before him is us. It says, for the joy set before me, he went to the cross. And I believe as he hung on that cross, he looked down through all of eternity and he saw every one of us. He saw that we would, we would sin against God. That, and not one of us can say, I'm not a sinner. You know, I, I worked with a person who used to say when something went wrong, why me, God? I'm semi-good. I used to say to her, and that means what? 
We don't want to be semi-good. We, we're followers of, of Jesus Christ. And we come here tonight to celebrate what he did for us. You know, and, and, the, and the thing that's so in, incredible to me is that uh, down through all the ages and, and as, as, as much as there's only a remnant so many times, just a remnant, Jesus is still with us. And he will be. He'll always be present in the sharing of communion, in the, in the washing of feet, in the loving one another. And we have to, there is no one, I have to remember in my mind, there is no one that's in a station below me. But there's also no one when it comes to serving in a station above me. You know, so I, I, I was sitting in my chair thinking of washing Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth's feet. What an honor that would have been. To wash the feet of the president would be an honor. To wash Taylor Swift's feet. But also I want to wash the feet of the guy in the corner who has a sign that says, I'll work for food. That's what Jesus called us to. We're his followers. And here's the one last thing. I have, <laughs> as I was thinking about it and praying about it, I thought, there's blessing in, in, in serving. There's such a blessing, always a blessing. And then I was thinking, to not let someone serve my, me is denying them, robbing them of a blessing. And not five minutes after I had that thought, my sister said to me, can I get you something? I said, no, I'll get it. She said, no, no. Can I get you something? I said, you know what you could? I'd like, I, I, I would like some orange juice. And she came in and she gave it to me. She said, thank you. <laughs> thank you for letting me do that. I realized my pride. I want to be independent. I want to take care of myself. I want to do it on my own. I don't have to have someone else bring me my orange juice. I can get it for myself. And so I, I, you know, I confess I've spent the last few days chilling out in my chair. So when Kyle walks by, I, said, I needed some Tylenol this afternoon. And I said, could you get the Tylenol out of the cabinet for me, please? I was feeling like, boy, I'm check, checking them up off here now. I really got, I'm, I'm figuring this thing out. I can do this. But don't ever rob anyone of serving you. Because you rob them of the blessing. And that's all I have to share. Amen. Now, if you could take the great Thanksgiving, we'll celebrate communion together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift, emptying himself that our joy might be full. 
He fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with scorn, scorned and forgotten, washed the disciples' feet. By baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night he was betrayed, he gave himself up for us. He took bread and gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he said, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant, for you given for you. Take and drink in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I, w I was, I don't know, is it possible that we can come up and stand here and, Frank, could you help me? Would you distribute? So that we can take this together. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And his blood poured out for you for your salvation. Remember him and be thankful. Thank you for these, this gift to us. That you invite us to your table. Help us, Lord, to go forth with thankful hearts, remembering that we have come to this table, that we are forgiven, and that we're yours. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Following the uh, readings, if um, I'll, I'll just dismiss you, and, and we can leave in silence. OK. John 13, 1 through 17. Jesus watches, washes the disciples' feet. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given up 
all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid his, aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel with which he was girded. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but only also wash my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And that is why he said, you are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If then you, Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who, sent, who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. John 13, 31 through 35, <clears throat> the new commandment. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and in him God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while, and I am with you. You will seek me... And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come.
Reading six, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Go now in the blessed assurance that you are loved. Amen.